Good howdy folks, welcome back to another James Blackburn experience. This week's video adventure is the start of a three-part series about scouting, hiking, and backpacking a section of the North Crest Trail in the Sandia Mountains of New Mexico. We start our adventure on the crest at an elevation of 10,678 feet, almost one mile above the city of Albuquerque. My hiking partner today was actor, filmmaker, and great friend Royd. Since we were here during the pandemic of 2020, we wore a mask while near others. We took in the magnificent views and watched someone sail through the air down below. The air was cool and felt nice as the excitement continued to build. We'd be hiking north from here past the radio and TV towers. Our goal was about two miles on the North Crest Trail to scout for a potential future backpacking trip. Before we began our hike today, we had a friendly visit from a bird who was having a tasty meal. I saw him out of the corner of my eye. That was pretty cool. Nature as it happens. It's a little tiny bird too. As you can see, we're about to hike Crest Trail number 130 in the Sandia Mountains of New Mexico. We're gonna hike past this fence, which is where the radio towers are at. And we're gonna hike out and get some nice views going today. Should be awesome. All right, folks, we're here. We're gonna be hiking up this way for a little while. So as they say in all my other videos when I hike, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And we're about four or five steps into it. We continued hiking past the fence that surrounded the towers. I could feel the forest surrounding me and my stress melting away. Today had been a perfect day so far. It just doesn't get any better than this. I'm trying to remember what that's called, but it's pretty cool nature as it happens. I was having one of those moments where I felt truly thankful to be alive. It keeps coming closer. Fly over here and land on my hand so I can get a good shot. My wild spirit was feeling alive and curious about what's next in this awesome wilderness. My heart felt full and happy as the wilderness released the shackles of humanity and I became one with the forest. The forest air was clean and I breathed in the mountain freshness. This place was putting me in a great mood and I felt like celebrating life again. What a great day. Backpacking is similar to life. The best rewards come from honest, hard work. Sometimes the amount of work ahead of us seems overwhelming. So just think about that next step, that next section of forest, that next stream crossing. Take one step at a time, and before you know it, there you are. Remember that life is a journey, not a destination. True beauty comes from within, and life is whatever you make it. Last time I was up here, this had not burned yet. This is uh, a yeah, bit of a bummer, but the new forest will be nice and healthy though, huh? Time, what is it? How can it be truly defined? It's not physical, yet it is. You can't own it, yet we do. It can't be bargained with or changed, yet it can. Time marches on and waits for nothing. This message brought to you by a man and his computer and his crazy brain. Yep, there's the towers. Awesome. The landscape was so intense and beautiful that I felt tiny in this universe, but at the same time I felt completely connected to it all. It was as if I could feel the universe flowing in my veins. I was nothing and everything all at once felt an almost overwhelming feeling of peace and tranquility. Uh, that is quite a view. <laughs> I couldn't ask for a better day or a better hike at this exact moment. I was beginning to feel very philosophical when I had this thought. We all have bridges to cross and weight to bear. At times it may seem impossible or even dangerous. It's at these times where I feel we live the most. Living life on the edge of impossible is where we feel the most alive. The feeling of being connected with the planet was a beautiful thing. I was out of breath, but full of life. I felt at one with nature. I felt at one with the earth and the universe. All right, folks. So we've been hiking for a little bit. It's been very scenic and beautiful. 
We found a spot here that I've always called a camp spot that I'd love to camp eventually. Roy found a nice sitting tree and we're gonna probably have some lunch here. Can't think of a better place to have lunch than this. It's awesome. All right, you're probably wondering, what do you bring for lunch when you're on a hike like this? And really that's up to you. You can have uh, anything you want for lunch that won't spoil out here. And back in my cooler, I have, well, it's a backpack cooler. I have some ice pads in there and some fresh food. So what do you say we go take a look and see what's in there? All right, so we are on the edge of the mountain, back here sitting in the shade, a little lunch, a little hangout time, and we're gonna get busy relaxing. All right, folks, we're gonna have some lunch here, so I'm gonna get this here backpack opened up and see what all's in there, so. <laughs> There's a Sasquatch behind me. <laughs> or as I said in the Gila, it's a Roid Squatch. <laughs> this would be an awesome camp spot. I'd love to come back to it. All right, folks, this is my East Hills Outdoors backpack cooler that they sent me. I've used it in several of my videos now, and I gotta say, it's a nice little backpack. So inside, you can see I got a couple ice packs in there, soda, some M&Ms. Uh, this is a pretzels, and down underneath there is a Tortilla with peanut butter and jelly on it. So let's get started on chowing. <laughs> tortilla with peanut butter and jelly. You can never go wrong with that. I knew I'd felt like this before, but it had been a while and I was glad to be back where I belonged, the wilderness. There he is. <laughs> I breathed in the clean mountain air and felt truly alive again. All around me was a beautiful landscape and I wanted to take it all in while I was here. I love to capture nice moments and experiences, and then I have it documented and I can edit it down as a memory to share. The views in all directions were amazing. I mean, how could I not be blown away? Well, to be honest, I was blown away and was feeling the energy of the area flowing like an electrical current throughout my wild spirit. views everywhere were mind-blowing and I could not stop smiling. What a great day to be alive and experience this wonderful area of the American Southwest. As I sat there and caught my breath, I looked around in wonder and felt truly fortunate to be alive. What a great day. So if that towers are at almost 11,000 feet, he's up at least 12 or 13 probably. was fortunate to be here. I was not going to take any of this for granted. I wanted to take it all in. I wanted to be a part of it all. I could hear the rocks, the trees, the wind, and the sky talking to me. And they were all saying the same thing. Respect us and you are welcome here anytime. The respect I did. And I felt truly thankful to be welcomed here. That's up there ways, man. That is awesome. Another beautiful day here in the beautiful New Mexico. We're in the Sandia Mountains. We were up at 10,678 feet, and now we're heading down the mountain, back to Albuquerque. And as usual, love, love, hate, hate, take care of each other. All right, good howdy, folks. Welcome back to another James Blackburn experience. Today I'm on Crush Trail number 130 in the Sandia Mountains. We're up about 10,600 feet right now. Decided to go do a little hike. Chapter two, the attempted camp, but we got rained out. 
The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Trail begins right here next to this fenced in area, which if you look up above, you can see there's a radio tower there. There's a whole bunch of them here on top of the mountain. And uh, you have to hike about, I don't know, a third of a mile on this, kind of next to the road for a little bit. But eventually you end up in the true wilderness area. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit, but it's a nice day up here so far. Here's a little better shot of some of the towers up here. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I'm about a hundred steps into it. Loving every, every step right now. I will tell you, I'm already out of breath. It's because we're up so high in elevation, you can definitely feel the thinner air up here. But boy, it smells nice, all this wet pine trees from all the rain we've been getting. All right, the original plan was to meet up here with my friend Royd and his sons. We were gonna meet up here at five o'clock today to backpack this and stay the night on the top of the mountain. But it's been raining off and on for the last week and today quite a bit actually. It may not be raining at this exact moment, but on my drive up to the top of the mountain, it was raining off and on and it was raining pretty good too. So I'm assuming it's not over with yet, but uh, so we canceled the trip for this time. We're gonna do this and backpack it another time. But so I thought I'm up here. I might as well hike around and take in some of this beauty, even if there's a fence and towers. I said this is only about on the first third of a mile and then it turns into a true wilderness area. You'll see the sign for the wilderness area come up here in a little while. It's weird, the sun's starting to come out now. It's like a very beautiful day. Makes me still want to camp up here, but I know that's not gonna last. The, the weather's gonna come in again and, oh, looky here. We're at the end of the fence, into the true wilderness. I'm feeling it under my feet too. The ground feels very spongy. Uh, it has this sort of wet dampness to it that you can feel underneath your feet. So yeah, it's definitely wet and muddy up here a little bit probably could backpack it and make it work but we'll come back on another weekend and do it instead the air was cool and felt nice as the excitement continued to build I felt an almost overwhelming feeling of peace and tranquility just saw a couple deer up the trail two males pretty good size actually but they took off before I was able to get them on camera that was neat though. Oh, I still see one off in the distance there. Might be hard to see it on camera, but it's behind the trees straight up ahead of me. Let's go and take a closer look. Oh, here's one to the right of me. My second Saturday in a row here, and I was happy to attempt an overnight backpacking camp. However, it was raining and it didn't look like it was gonna stop anytime soon. So we canceled the overnighter. However, I was here and I had my rain gear, so why not take a hike and have some outdoor time? A day hike today, and then come back next weekend for the backpacking overnighter with friends. All right, it's cleared up enough that uh, you can see off in the distance here. I'll show you, but not before the deer crosses the trail in front of me. That's the one I just saw. So check this out over here. Down by the road coming up, you can see off into the distance quite a bit of ways here. It's really beautiful. Oh, I think this is, this is great. I know there was a second deer up here somewhere. Did not see where that one went. The one that I filmed went up to the left here into the woods. But there's a second one down here somewhere that I didn't see if he was on the left or the right. So I like to give them enough space that they don't feel stressed out by me being here. Oh, I see them. They're both right up there in the woods. Right there. There you go. Awesome. Too cool. Nature. I wasn't kidding when I said that the trail was muddy in spots. Look at that. That's a foot soaker right there, so I'm going to have to take a little bit of the high ground here and not get my feet too wet. But 
here's what I was telling you about earlier, where the Sandia Wilderness Cibola National Forest begins is right here. Awesome, super, super awesome. And we're probably a quarter mile from the, from the parking lot. I mean, we're still here in vehicles down below here on the road, but that'll change here very soon. This is, trail is awesome for getting away from civilization and finding some peaceful and quiet areas. So we're gonna do that today. Keep heading in, see where it takes us, and later we'll come back out this way, right here. Yeah. I didn't realize, but the deer are still very close by. Up there behind those branches, you can see one standing there still. That's pretty neat. I'm not sure where the second one was at, but yeah, there's one right up there in the tree still. This kind of view right here, right now, is exactly why I love this trail. It's one of my top 10 favorite trails in all of the Sandias. And it's just peaceful, quiet. You always meet interesting and nice people on the trail as well. Just had a nice conversation with the guy and we're talking about all the deer that are out up here today. It's pretty cool. I can feel the forest surrounding me and my stress melting away. Today has been a perfect day so far. It just doesn't get any better than this. I was having one of those moments where I felt truly thankful to be alive. The forest air was clean and I breathed in the mountain freshness. And the birds are very active today, up here. My wild spirit was feeling alive and curious about what's next in this awesome wilderness. My heart felt full and happy as the wilderness released the shackles of humanity I became one with the forest. It just got so beautiful up here all of a sudden. This place was putting me in a great mood. I felt like celebrating life again. What a great day. All right. Well, this trail sign over here marks half mile mark from the parking lot. And you can already tell it's totally quiet and peaceful here. There's no people around. You don't hear the highway or the road at all. It's just really, really nice. And I have been curious about these two trails here. I've always gone on the North Crest Trail, which is to my right, but there's two trails that lead off to other spots here and I've never really explored them. Let's take a look real quick, see what they do. Oh buddy, this one goes down steep and quick. Probably shouldn't do this while it's muddy, but I'm gonna come back and explore this one day. The trail heads down here to the right. You can see it's starting to clear out back there behind the trees. Albuquerque's down below. Wow. This is gorgeous. This other trail, side trail I've never hiked either. Very intriguing. It's right here on the side of the mountain. It's a little single track trail. About as perfect of a trail as you can actually find. I'm not sure where this goes. I'm gonna have to look this up in my map book when I get home. I'll add some narration later. Backpacking is similar to life. The best rewards come from honest hard work. Sometimes the amount of work ahead of us seems overwhelming. So just think about that next step. That next section of forest, that next stream crossing. Take one step at a time, and before you know it, there you are. Remember that life is a journey, not a destination. True beauty comes from within, and life is whatever you make it. The landscape was so intense and beautiful that I felt tiny in this universe, but at the same time I felt completely connected to it all. It was as if I could feel the universe flowing in my veins. I was nothing everything all at once. You couldn't ask for a better day or a better hike at this exact moment. I was beginning to feel very philosophical when I had this thought. We all have bridges to cross and weight to bear. At times it may seem impossible or even dangerous. It's at these times where I feel we live the most. Living life on the edge of impossible is where we feel the most alive. The feeling of being connected with the planet was a beautiful thing. I was out of breath, but full of life. I felt at one with nature. I felt at one with the earth 
in the universe. All right, folks, I made it to one of the overlooks here. And since the sun came out, you can see some blue sky mixed in with some the storms and stuff, but man, oh man, what a change since I got here. It was raining the whole way up here and now, just beautiful. But off in the distance there, beyond that pointy rock right there, let me zoom in. You can see a really good downpour probably heading this direction. And that's a heavy downpour. Thought I heard some thunder in it too, so I probably should start to head out here in a little bit, get back to the safety of the truck. But man, what an awesome day. It was really cool to come out here and just be out here and be out here in nature and take it all in for a little bit. Heard a little rumble over there in that storm, so there's definitely some a little bit of thunder. I haven't seen any lightning yet, but it does look like a storm that's heading this direction. So I'm gonna start hiking back here in a little bit and not get caught in all that. But it's beautiful to see from a distance. You know, I was worried about that storm heading over here and it looks like it's heading north of the mountain. So I don't even think we're gonna get that at all. So I don't have to rush to get out of here, but it would be a good idea to get moving in case something sneaks up over here on the other side. You can see there's some clouds moving on over here by the towers, kind of dark, so I'm lulling myself into a sense of uh, safety here because the sun's on me, but the truth of the matter is, is it's going to rain again soon, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> the views in all directions were amazing. I mean, how could I not be blown away? Well, to be honest, I was blown away was feeling the energy of the area flowing like an electrical current throughout my wild spirit. The views everywhere were mind-blowing and I could not stop smiling. What a great day to be alive and experience this wonderful area of the American Southwest. As I sat there and caught my breath, I looked around in wonder and felt truly fortunate to be alive. The weather just keeps changing. The longer I stay up here, the more it changes. But the one thing it's consistent with is rain. It hasn't rained where I'm at right now for a little while, but it's definitely raining off in the distance. A variety of different places. So chances are I might get a little bit of moisture on the way out, but that's perfectly fine because I love it. I knew I was fortunate to be here, and I was not gonna take any of this for granted. I wanted to take it all in. I wanted to be a part of it all. Awesome! I could hear the rocks, the trees, the wind, and the sky talking to me. And they were all saying the same thing. Respect us, and you are welcome here anytime. All right, folks, well, that wraps up another James Blackburn experience. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We're gonna wrap it up here. I still gotta hike back out to the truck. So uh, not to get wet because it looks like the rain's coming in again, but we're gonna wrap up the video here for you and just say, I bid you farewell. Talk to you guys again soon and love, love, hate, hate. Take care of each other. All right, let's do this. breathed in the clean mountain air and felt truly alive again. I knew I'd felt like this before, but it had been a while and I was glad to be back where I belong, the wilderness. Getting dark up here quick. It would be best if I got back to the vehicle before the sun goes all the way down. I love to capture nice moments and experiences and then I have it documented and I can edit it down as a memory to share. All around me was some beautiful landscape and I wanted to take it all in while I was here.
Good howdy folks, welcome back to another James Blackburn experience. Today, we are on the North Crest Trail. Uh, well, we're not on the trail yet, we're in the parking lot for the trail, but we're gonna be doing trail, uh, Crest Trail number 130. We've got some other folks here, as you can see, that are going up with us. Uh, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be an overnighter, so we're gonna do dinner and breakfast on top of the mountain. So what do you say we get going? We're gonna film a sunset. Yes, that too. <laughs> All right, folks, here I am again. Crest Trail number 130, and the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We're like five steps into it. It's gonna be great. Dun, 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 dun. All right, folks, as I was saying the last time I was here, this fence is near a bunch of radio towers. It goes on for about a third of a mile or so, and then it turns into true wilderness. Here comes one of my friends on the trail here, good hiking buddy and board game guy, Rick Earthplay. Check out his YouTube channel. Beautiful day to be up here, huh? Hell yes. Can't go wrong. Nope. All right, folks, continuing the journey. I always love this part of the trail because it's where the fence finally ends. And you start heading back into the true forested area. And as you can tell, it's beautiful. Even on a cloudy day, nothing takes away from the beauty of a nice pine forest filled with aspens like this. Just a nice, clean, beautiful trail all right as we come out of the forest right there at the trail this is the first big open space that you come to on the crest trail number 130 and it's worth stopping and taking it in because just look how far you can see away uh, it's just amazing look how beautiful that is this place was putting me in a great mood i felt like celebrating life again the forest air was clean and i breathed in the mountain freshness what a great day. All right, folks, we are officially at the Sandia Mountain Wilderness, Cibola National Forest. So from here on in, we are on public land and you can camp just about anywhere. Of course, it does have to be a certain amount of feet off the trail. I believe it's the general rule is to camp one to 200 feet away from any road, trail or water source. Hiking in and doing our thing here. It's gonna be awesome. As I sat there and caught my breath, I looked around in wonder and felt truly fortunate to be alive. What a great day. This marks the half mile mark from the parking lot that we're in. We're not quite going to Del Agua Overlook, which is another mile and a half. I think we're only probably heading in another half mile or so. There's the trail. All right, folks, as you're heading up the trail, it just gets more and more beautiful. You can really get in the thick of the forest and then there's some big, overlooks here that you can just see forever I think we're gonna have a pretty awesome sunset tonight so I got to get to camp soon so that I can get shots of this because look how beautiful that is the air was cool and felt nice as the excitement continued to build boy this trail is something else it's like the kind of forest and trail that you see in the movies where you, you got to be sure it's make-believe it's not real but here it is it's as real as you can get. All right, we're all kind of going at our own speed. Royd and his two sons are up ahead. Rick's behind me a little ways. I'm kind of just somewhere in the middle, going whatever speed feels safe for us. You don't want to push yourself, especially when you're up over 10,000 feet of elevation. Just do what's comfortable. Sometimes it's good to just find a log to sit down on and take a little break. Look at the view, breathe in the clean air. Yeah. All right, the journey continues. Still beautiful, still amazing. Never ceases to amaze. Something like that. Big old downpour over there. A little time before sunset. I have a feeling it's gonna be one of the best sunsets I've probably ever seen. All right, folks, we made it. We're just above this big rock face here. It's called the Pyramid. And look at that. Nice. <laughs> That's Royd. You might recognize him from a few of my other videos. We got a couple other varmints back here too with cameras. Oh, those are nice. So we are gonna be camping back in these trees. So that's gonna be awesome. My backpack's there. My tent's gonna go somewhere back here. We'll find it in a second. Backpacking is similar to life. The best rewards come from honest hard work. 
Sometimes the amount of work ahead of us seems overwhelming. So just think about that next step, that next section of forest, that next stream crossing. Take one step at a time and before you know it, there you are. Remember that life is a journey, not a destination. True beauty comes from within and life is whatever you make it. I felt an almost overwhelming feeling of peace and tranquility. I could feel the forest surrounding me and my stress melting away. I was having one of those moments where I felt truly thankful to be alive. The landscape was so intense and beautiful that I felt tiny in this universe, but at the same time I felt completely connected to it all. It was as if I could feel the universe flowing in my veins. I was nothing and everything all at once. I was beginning to feel very philosophical when I had this thought. We all have bridges to cross and weight to bear. At times it may seem impossible or even dangerous. It's at these times where I feel we live the most. Living life on the edge of impossible is where we feel the most alive. All right, folks, got the tent set up. I'm starting to get gear put in here. I uh, had to kind of rush in here really fast, though, because it started raining outside. And it's kind of intense out there still. Let's take a look. There we go. Some rain coming in, nothing major, but beautiful day camping at 10,000 feet. All right, we have all our shelters up and in place, ready to go. There's mine. We got a couple of the other tents right over here. And Rick's got his hammock going up. Plus, we have one more tent back here in the back. And you can tell it is getting dark quick back here. Sun is setting. Rick's almost ready though. How's it was a little bit of a hike in here, man. I was I was a little beat getting here too. I think next time we'll car camp. How's that sound? Sounds right. wonderful. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, let's go over here and see what Roy's doing. He is getting some filming going as well. He's very happy with his new cameras. My wild spirit was feeling alive and curious about what's next in this awesome wilderness. My heart felt full and happy as the wilderness released the shackles of humanity and I became one with the forest. All the way around me is just this intense beauty, but back here behind me, which is right back there, you can see there's a storm coming in or passing by us. It's a big one. But we're not in it right now, so this is really, really cool. Passing by us, looks like, yeah. Wow. Down below is Albuquerque. The Rio Grande Valley. So we're up next to the storm. We're not under it, but literally right next to it. That night as we slept, a large thunder and lightning storm happened. We were at nearly 10,000 feet in elevation, and somehow the storm missed us by just a tiny bit. All night, the lightning flashed over the city, but somehow it was just south of where we were camping. I'll be honest, I did not sleep well that night. The storm was loud and bright, so I dozed off and on, but that was about it. And there's a lesson to be learned here, and that is this. It's probably better not to camp on top of a mountain near 10,000 feet of elevation during the monsoon season. We were lucky this time, but it could have been a lot worse. That storm that happened just missed us, and it was bad. If the storm had been further north, we would have been inside the clouds and the storm. That would have been scary and potentially life-threatening. So, lesson learned. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to another James Blackburn experience. It's a little after 6 a.m. up here on the crest of the mountain. Thought I'd wander around the woods for a few minutes and just take in some of the beauty. And of course, back here behind the woods, there is sunrise that's happening. 
if she could see it better. Let's take a look. You can kind of see some of the orange through there a little bit. It was a good night up here last night. The weather stayed pretty calm, although I woke up a few times during the nighttime and I could hear thunder and see flashes of lightning off in the distance. So that was kind of interesting, but we survived it. We're here and uh, it's a nice morning so far. I think it's gonna be a beautiful day. Let's go over and take a quick look at uh, the drop off here. See the city down below. We're looking directly to the west right now, but you can see the sun is picking up on some of those clouds. Pretty awesome. The views in all directions were amazing. I mean, how could I not be blown away? Well, to be honest, I was blown away and was feeling the energy of the area flowing like an electrical current throughout my wild spirit. The views everywhere were mind-blowing and I could not stop smiling. What a great day to be alive and experience this wonderful area of the American Southwest. All right, folks, everybody else is still sleeping. I'm the only one awake at the moment and wandering around, but I wanted to show you the radio towers up there on the mountain. That's where we're heading to later today after breakfast. It's about a mile or so from here. The one issue though is that you can tell from here on the ground where I'm standing to the radio towers is up in elevation from here. So that part's always rough is going up, especially when you're carrying a full backpack, but thankfully it's only a mile, mile and a half. So we'll be heading back this way later this morning. I breathed in the clean mountain air and felt truly alive again. The earth is coming alive. See the sun peeking through the trees over there. Beautiful moment. I love a good early morning in the mountains when you see the sun start to pop up in places like this. It's so beautiful and calm right now. Just loving it, it's so peaceful here. The feeling of being connected with the planet was a beautiful thing. I was out of breath, but full of life. I felt at one with nature. I felt at one with the earth and the universe. I knew I'd felt like this before, but it had been a while and I was glad to be back where I belonged, the wilderness. Right, folks check this out they just showed me that the, they discovered earlier ladybugs on the trees here and this is just a little tiny spot here but they're going up the tree there's just tons of them ladybugs that is really really awesome I've never seen so many before Wow! in the Sandia mountains up more than 10,000 feet in elevation it was a ladybug bonanza it was pretty much an annual phenomenon, although the intensity can vary depending on the conditions. Personally, I'm unsure if these were indeed ladybugs or possibly the Asian lady beetle. There's just thousands and thousands of ladybugs. It's not always easy, but distinguishing between the Asian lady beetles and ladybugs is possible. Ladybugs and Asian lady beetles definitely look similar. If you look closely, however, you'll be able to spot a few key differences. First of all, Asian lady beetles are slightly larger than ladybugs. While all ladybugs are bright red with black spots, Asian lady beetles' coloration can vary from red to orange. The easiest way to tell Asian lady beetles apart from ladybugs at a glance is to look at the white M. Asian lady beetles have a distinctive, highly visible M-shaped black marking on their otherwise white heads. This marking varies in size, thickness, and overall shape, but it's always there. Ladybug's heads are mostly white with small white markings. Ladybug's white markings are confined to the sides of the head and may resemble cheeks. It's the most ladybugs I've ever seen. and They're like on tons of trees here. I could feel the forest surrounding me and my stress melting away. 
Today had been a perfect day so far. All right, folks, people are starting to stir, getting up and doing some things, taking in the view, checking out millions of ladybugs up here covering some of the trees. And uh, it's time probably to start packing up and breaking down some of the gear here in a little bit. But first, a little breakfast. All around me was some beautiful landscape, and I wanted to take it all in while I was here. I love to capture nice moments and experiences, and then I have it documented and I can edit it down as a memory to share. I knew I was fortunate to be here, and I was not gonna take any of this for granted. I wanted to take it all in. I wanted to be a part of it all. I could hear the rocks, the trees, the wind, and the sky talking to me. And they were all saying the same thing. Respect us, and you are welcome here anytime. Respect I did, and I felt truly thankful to be welcomed here. All right, folks, got the tent pretty much emptied out. Gonna break that down next. It's a good campsite, served us well. Got a little chilly last night, and of course there were some thunderstorms nearby, but didn't stop us from having an enjoyable evening nonetheless. Here you go. Look at that view. All right, over here is an even more beautiful view, or just as beautiful. And back here was where camp was at for the night. Three of our friends have already headed back and they're back at the vehicles. But uh, we're here with the gear. Rick's over here, he's getting ready as well. How's it going so far? There you go. <laughs> there it is. But this is how you get organized when you're outside. You get everything laid out. So, Shake it all down. Yep, you know where, where everything is and you find a home for it in the pack. So, That's right. All right, well, we're going to be hiking out here probably in a little while and heading back to the vehicle. But good, fun adventure. Thanks, Almost man. Almost 11,000 feet. Yep. It's a little hard to catch your breath up here. Yeah, I'm feeling it. You can hear me on camera, I'm sure, but... Yeah, he's right. We're up almost 11,000 feet and the air is thin. We're two miles above sea level about. And, and that is definitely a thing you can notice when you see this view right here. The Sandia Mountains are a large mountain range located in Bernalillo and Sandoval counties, immediately to the east of the city of Albuquerque in New Mexico in the southwestern United States. We are on top of the mountain still. However, we have our gear packed up and ready to go. I'm gathering the last videos here of this excursion for this location, although I'll probably film a little bit on the way out, but yeah, it's just been a beautiful day. Really loving it. All right, gotta say it's quite an adventure camping up here at about 10,000 feet and uh, having a big thunderstorm roll through the area last night. That was kind of neat. And just enjoying it now. Sun feels warm, but the air still feels cool, so it's really a beautiful morning. There's birds flittering around, and you just can't complain. If you complain when you're in a place like this, then you're doing it wrong. The Sandia Mountains are the most visited range in New Mexico. Numerous hiking trails exist on both sides of the range, such as the popular La Luz Trail and the Crest Trail. Much of the west side of the range is included in the Sandia Mountain Wilderness. It's possible to walk the entire spine of the Sandia Mountains, a 26-mile hike with over 4,000 feet in elevation gain. The Sandia Mountains rise to 10,678 feet at Sandia Crest which is topped by television and radio towers and offers panoramic views of more than 11,000 square miles. Summer storms can cause dramatic temperature drops and hypothermia is possible even during the warmest months, so always carry protective clothing. Summer storms can also produce lightning that can be very dangerous for hikers on peaks and exposed ridges. So if you see a storm coming in, take the necessary precautions for safety. All right, folks, journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We're about 10 steps into it. Well, about a mile from camp, 
about a half mile left to go to the parking lot. And there's a little side trail here that I checked out last week. I didn't go too far. And it goes down into the forest here. I believe this is a rock uh, trail, uh, hiking trail for rock climbing access. That's what I was trying to say. And I don't want to go too far down it because that means I have to come back up. But you can tell by looking here, this is some serious mountain terrain here. It's steep. It, you would not want to go bushwhacking down this. You definitely want to stay on the trail. Well, this is a really intense, steep trail. I know it doesn't look that steep on here, but if you look at it from down here, it's, it's a lot of going up. I wouldn't want to hike this for hours at a time, especially with a big, heavy backpack on. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Back up to the main trail. I took a small break in the shade for a few minutes as I enjoyed the mountain goodness all around me. Only a half mile left back to the trailhead and the parking lot. All right, folks, I'm about uh, a little less than a half mile from the trailhead. It's become a sense of urgency now because Rick is hurting bad. This thin air is not agreeing with him. He's got some busted up ribs from a fall he took in the mountains a few months ago. So he's hurting. I had him turn off back behind me and head down to the road. So I'm gonna go get my truck and drive down, pick him up and uh, bring him back up to his truck so he doesn't have to walk as much. <sighs> thin air's getting me too. but come back to the fenced in tower area so you know you're getting close to the parking lot when that happens well the parking lot is within sight so i'll grab my truck head down get rick and call it a day here in a little bit head back to albuquerque all right folks as you can see i'm in the truck made it back to the parking lot I drove down the road this direction here to go pick up Rick and he was doing fine and he's back here in the truck with me now. So he's going to be yes. getting in his own vehicle in a uh, minute. Old age, shortness of breath, hypoxia, tired, haven't eaten dinner, breakfast, a lot of stamina to get the hell out of there and I appreciate your help. No problem man, that's what friends do for each other. That's so. right. So, well, all right. I'm not going to forget this. No problem. You're welcome, man. Yeah, we saw the road, parking lot. James was like, hey, man, there's a quarter mile off the trail. Let's go down there and I'll uh, come pick you up in the truck. And it's like, I feel 100% more uh, <laughs> now that i am got some uh, nurturing uh, snacks and I'm out of the forest. Yeah. <laughs> there's our nurturing snacks mm -hmm. there. <laughs> So, yep, we're back. We're still alive on the right side of the dirt. <laughs> and I feel so much more alive than carrying that 45 pounds straight uphill for a mile. Yeah, that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. All right, folks, that concludes this awesome journey. We still have to drive out of the mountains and back to town, but you've seen that drive on my channel a million times, so I'm not going to show it to you again. So I'm going to wrap it up here by saying love, love, hate, hate, take care of each other. Thank you for watching the James Blackburn Experience. Be sure to check my YouTube channel for almost 900 additional video adventures. Thanks for watching. Purple marshes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's perfect.